Good morning, folks. The Real Captain Kirk here live from Weather Trends 360 studio here in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. It is starting to look like fall outside our offices here this morning. In fact, uh, we know it's fall because we uh, we see that the Canadian geese are back, uh, a whole flock of them uh, heading south. So not sure what they know, but uh, my guess is they know it's going to be the coldest, snowiest winter in five years here in the eastern U.S. We've actually, according to Weather Trends 360, uh, we've actually had the second wettest year in 30 plus years here locally and the, the trees have been really muted uh, in terms of fall color but here this morning we're shocked to see actually some uh, signs of fall so it looks uh, a little more fall like outside the offices here this morning this past week we actually won our 17th business technology award uh, 30th fastest growing company here in eastern pa so uh, kudos to team wt360 this actually makes for our 17th business tech award and uh, rumor has it we're up for number 18 here uh, in december so again hats off to the team here at weather trends international um, looking ahead here out in the atlantic we actually have uh, hurricane oscar uh, the storm is actually a cat one, probably going to become a cat two, but the good news is the track is going to take it out to sea, will not threaten the U.S., and head actually toward U.K. Ireland may actually get some uh, impact from this in a few days. But uh, this actually makes for our 15th named storm of the season. Again, exactly what Weather Trends predicted a year ahead. We, in the preseason outlooks, we were on the high side of everybody. Uh, we had 15 named systems. A lot of folks actually downgraded their forecast uh, as they went through the season. Uh, so we had 15 named systems to date. Uh, eight hurricanes, two major hurricanes, and accumulated cyclone energy index of 123. All well above average, so a very active season. The only thing that's not above average is the two major hurricanes. Um, we should have about two and a half or so on a given year. But exactly where we thought they'd make landfall, they made landfall. So our high-risk area here in North Carolina, South Carolina, hit it, and the panhandle of Florida. So again, did very well this year, predicting a year ahead, a very active season. Northern Hemisphere overall has had 68 named tropical systems. One thing that's uh, not very active uh, in the U.S. has been uh, violent F3, F5 tornadoes. Fortunately, um, this year's actually hit historic lows, at least going back to when records really started back in 1954. So had some really active years of very violent tornadoes in the mid-70s. Um, and right now, we're actually plummeting to, again, record lows. Looking at the, the weather pattern here over the next 14 days, we're going to see that there's two cold fronts coming through, uh, one around the 1st of November, uh, another one around the 9th of November. We'll get really warm ahead of these cold fronts and then really cold behind the cold, warm cold fronts. So again, a pretty active pattern here over the next couple weeks. Looking at this week specifically, the, the U.S. overall is the, the coolest in four years and the wettest in three years. Much of the country is uh, well below average here this week. West Coast still pretty hot. Um, northeast is going to get a big warm surge here midweek, uh, 60s and 70s ahead of the cold front, and then temperatures plummet as we get into the weekend. Again, this conveyor belt of moisture from Texas to the Ohio Valley, more rain. We don't want it, uh, but unfortunately we're getting it. Uh, jumping ahead here to next week for the 5 through 11 November time frame. Again, same general trend, coolest in nine years, wettest in 30 plus years, right? Where we had it this week, we're going to have it again next week. So again, the active pattern here, um, but again, overall theme is cool and wet for the U.S. overall. Uh, recapping October in Canada has been the coldest in nine years, driest in four. U.S. is the coldest, wettest in nine years, snowiest in five years. Uh, and over in Europe, it's been very warm, wettest in 30 plus years, and what, uh, I'm sorry, warmest in 30, wettest in five. So again, let's quantify this and what it means. Uh, I thought today we'd talk a little bit of business because we're not just about weather maps. Um, so in the Northeast, for example, this year has been 11 degrees colder than last October. Record hot October last year, 11 degrees colder this year. What's that mean? Uh, so we try to quantify that for our customers. This is a what we call the power of one degree. Every degree hotter, this is the increase in sales year over year. So if it's a degree hotter in the spring, you got about a 3% increase in sandal and shorts and spring apparel, about 1.2% for beer. Now if it's 10 degrees hotter in the spring, you're up 30%, you're up 12%. So this is just one way that we quantify the weather's influence on seasonal sales. We'll focus here today on, on the apparel items. So again, jeans go up about every degree colder now, there's about a 2% increase in jeans, 3% for hoodies and sweaters, 3% for boots, 5% for coats, and as much as 10% for things that are volatile like these hard goods of heaters and 24% for electric bedding. Let's put this into perspective. This October, for example, in the Northeast is 11 degrees colder than last year. So that's a 22% increase in jean sales. It's a 33% increase in hoodies and sweaters. It's a 55% increase in coats. Um, much as 22% for coffee. Unfortunately, when you get your electric bill here in a few weeks for October, probably going to be up about 55 some percent. So this is how we would quantify uh, weather's influence on sales. We do that simply by looking at customers' data. You, you collect their sales data for the past several years, quantify it against past weather, 
And then from there, again, one of the unique things we do is this power of one degree. Uh, but the output is to give someone a seasonal sales forecast. Now, again, the way you do that is you, you first look at the sales. These are the t changes in the sales uh, for a particular spring category. And then you overlay the weather. And then you quantify this with regression analysis. So some seasons are long, some seasons are short. Um, if we go back here in the Northeast, we had a really early starting season back in uh, 2016, and then followed by two very cold, snowy Ap March, April 2017, 2018. So this is, again, how we would define, um, you know, just how significant the weather is on seasonal category sales. The outputs are not only the weather, telling folks the year ahead weather by week, everywhere they might have a store or wa warehouse, uh, but also quantifying the lift in sales. Uh, so from there, if you know what your sales forecast looks like based on weather trends a year out using a statistical climate cycle approach, very different than traditional meteorology. This would not work with traditional meteorology. Um, so once you've quantified these sales results out a year, how much inventory do you need? How much, ad when do you do the advertising? When do you promote? When do you clear out inventory? So it's really assessing the, the business side of weather here a year ahead. So it's a, a little different than what you might experience here uh, um, on TV. So with that, folks, again, I uh, hope you enjoyed this week's segment. We'll be back here next week, same time. Have a great week.